Good morning, traders. Thank God it's Friday. Um, Bran, um, Ryan is still feeling uh, very, very tired. Uh, of course, the COVID is something uh, that saps your energy. So uh, he's not going to be uh, with us today. Um, hopefully, he'll be back uh, on Monday or so. Um, he's feeling a little bit better, but not uh, fresh and, and uh, upbeat enough to be uh, to be with us um, for now. Um, right, let's get uh, stuck into what's uh, happening um, in the markets. I'm going to run relatively quickly over, over the headlines because there's clearly one overarching um, theme that we need to uh, talk about uh, uh, today, um, which is uh, um, guiding all markets. And uh, we're, we're going to uh, have a, a deeper look at that in a few uh, in a few minutes. Right. What's happened overnight is that, um, okay, we have this 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 APEC meeting where uh, Kishida and uh, Xi uh, also met. Um, it was a bit of a, a discussion about everything and nothing. Um, not a lot came out of it. Uh, just saying that uh, they need to work together. They have uh, uh, challenges, common challenges. Uh, China, of course, um, was pointing at the, uh, the that they think too close relationship uh, of Japan with with the US, but um, uh, basically there's there's not a lot has been uh, uh, solved or uh, no big decisions uh, have been taken. Um, the the overall result of this this APEC meeting is uh, I'm not going to say a, a big victory for uh, for Xi, but uh, anyway uh, he has been. Uh, um, Getting some uh, some small uh, uh, victories uh, overall. Um, we could say the same about the US because they they're starting communication again, so they can uh, actually keep a closer eye on each other um, once more. But um, let's move on to uh, to something uh, else. Um, we are hearing from a lot of central bank speakers over the over the course of the week. We are going to have more. The uh, the global theme is that they start really to acknowledge the slowdown in uh, in in activities. Um, Fitz Cook, for instance, um, he was saying that um, he is attuned to the sharp decline in economic activity. Bank of England's man on the other side said um, that low productivity limits the UK potential for growth. We've also heard from Centineo and, uh, and and others at the ECB um, starting to talk about uh, their worries about growth. Um, and actually, it's not too far from what we actually see that is happening right now in uh, in in the market uh, in regards to what's happening on the bond market, in the yield market, and in the uh, equity markets, and in also the FX markets, who finally started to, uh, to wake up. To what's going on globally over the course of uh, of the week. Um, elsewhere in China, they're asking the big banks to uh, cap the rates on short-term funding, so they are still um, trying to uh, to revive their economy. We've seen more comments in the, in the market that China may have turned the corner. We're seeing it. The Chinese yuan is also, together with the the rest of the dollar, being weaker. Um, it is also strengthening a bit, so the, the market is looking much more positive towards China than it was um, only, uh, let's say, a week ago. Um, there were some, uh, Ueda was uh, in the diet for his semi-annual um, recap, and um, again, he's leaving the door open to, to normalization, but at the same time saying that he still wants to see other things going on, but... Um, he, he did confirm, uh, reading through the lines, he did confirm that stuff is stuff is happening. The only thing is how fast. Uh, again, uh, as we've been saying for many times, there's been a, a flood of of headlines. I'm not going to uh, uh, to, uh, to to give them all to you, but basically, um, that was the 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 yeast of it. Where, where they are in normalization process. Um, he has been challenged by some of the the members in the diet. Uh, about the weaker yen, um, he did come back say that it had some uh, some uh, um, negative effects indeed, but also at the same time uh, saying that for the uh, for the exporters it, it it had 
it has been a, a positive. Um, slight change of tone perhaps there as well, but uh, again, uh, Ureda is, is really measuring his words very carefully all the time. Um, so it, the yen moved a, a little bit, but then uh, not that much. It's it's mostly really in our time zone that, uh, that it started. Um, Deputy Finance Minister Akazawa was also on, uh, on the wires um, saying that they are not targeting specific levels, but excessive volatility and also noted that the yen weakness had some negative effects, but also somewhere some positive effects. Um, now, since they've been since they have been talking, um, yen up to yesterday, we saw those yen crosses still being very big. But then yesterday afternoon, um, something started to change, and this morning we we really saw a big acceleration that I'm going to show in a, in a few minutes. Um, it seems that the yen finally has uh, has woken up to everything that. Uh, that is going on. Um, we think nothing too much about this move. We think it's really a. Sorry, I'm going to kill my score. It's really a, a market move, but it, it it seems very thorough. So we were um, somewhere wondering um, if it may be a little bit stealth guided, um, but we will only know that, of course, um, if there have been any. Uh, stealth or other interventions uh, at the end of the at the end of the month, but that in the middle, uh, we're not sure about it. Um, what else? Yeah, the Fed. Um, um, back to the Fed's uh, side. Um, the governors have been uh, have been talking um, to. Uh, let me see uh, to the. Um, uh, to the Senate, and they they said that it uh, was okay to let the um, uh, balance sheet run down uh, further. Sorry, I was looking at the headline uh, uh, at the same time uh, that that I was talking here. Um, so, and we have seen, did it come over here? Um, I think the Fed's balance sheet came out last night. Yeah, here. So this is still pretty much um, running as uh, as planned, um, slowly but surely. Uh, coming down, so um, the Fed is really saying that they still can continue um, with doing so, and actually they 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 can. There is not too much reason for them not to. Um, there's a bit of pressure building in the in the Middle East on uh, on Israel not uh, not to 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 go beyond um, their actual targeted uh, uh, operations and. Uh, the U.S. and the EU um, are starting to push for a, a United Nations force to uh, to come into 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 post-war uh, Gaza. Uh, so they are trying to put uh, pressure on on Israel not to let the the, the thing really uh, spill over to anywhere else. Um, it it may or may not have uh, pushed the risk a, a bit into better territory uh, again today, but uh, it's all. Like very very small pieces of of this big puzzle, what is what is going on right now, um, and um, you know what? I'm going to leave it there for the headlines, and um, perhaps we can move straight away to what is happening in uh, in the markets because there is uh, a, a big uh, a big thing uh, going on. Ah, oh, yeah. Just uh, lastly, a bit of the numbers. Yesterday we saw this um, continuing jobless claims. Um, continue to tick up. Um, we saw the Philly Fed uh, come in better than expected, but all the, the components were uh, markedly weaker than uh, the CapEx is still negative. Uh, employment index is starting to fade. Um, new orders were were at a low and the cap capacity utilization rate was, uh, was below uh, expectations as well. And the industrial production, manufacturing production as well. So all of these numbers are still hinting at a slowdown and and really, that's the theme that we have uh, that we have seen, uh, as I already said, over the course of the of the whole week. And uh, today we uh, saw a, an acceleration of this theme. Moving over to uh, what's happened this morning, we had a weaker retail sales um, in the in the UK. The uh, ex fuel as well c coming in uh, quite a bit weaker than uh, than uh, previous. And even the revisions were uh, were a bit worse. So, um, sterling 
even though in the last hour um, um, sterling is recovering some of the uh, uh, some of its uh, its losses on the back of this uh, weaker retail sales um but sterling is is still somewhere um in 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 the box of the less buoyant um, currencies right now and actually same could be said uh, of the euro which is not uh, really um, gaining any new ground and i will show you why in uh, in a minute um the uh, european final cpi reading uh, came in as uh, as expected nothing uh, too much to uh, mention there really um and I think that is about it, unless you guys have seen uh, anything else that I really um, need to talk about, but that's uh, that's about it. The PPI in the key will end a bit higher than expected, but um, it's it's really uh, a dollar move there. And those Kiwi data have not really uh, had an impact on stuff like Aussie Kiwi, for instance. So uh, uh, Kiwi is just in, in the lot with the dollar. Right. Let's move on to what's happening in this market, okay? Just give me one sec, bear with me. Okay, so the overarching theme then of the week, um, and we can see it here from Monday, uh, Tuesday, we, we, we had a bit of a peak here and then we started to go lower in, the, in those yields. So we have successively uh, broken those, these four, 54, 55 on the tens. Um, and the um the bit of a supportive trend line here which was around uh for 43 44 which held the first time but then uh, uh overnight early this morning uh completely broke down and now we are eyeing at this support level here which is around 33 34 and uh also fred uh, um in our room was pointing at uh, 432 uh, as being the weekly uh, uh, 20 moving average. Okay, so there's there's a bit going on there in the in the low 430s on the on the US tens. I already highlighted this at the, uh, the the start of the of the week, really, or throughout the week, that we that it was possible that we were going to uh, for a test of this level, and that is exactly what we are on the way of doing so. Looking at what is to come later in the day, we have building permits. Uh, we have the and on the data front in the US, that's the only thing that really comes out. But um, if they show a weaker number, I would say that before the week is over, we are in a possible test of this uh, of this level. Okay, we need to get now back above 446, 47 to to undo this move and to and to start to creep higher again perhaps next week on the back of again a relatively busy schedule for the u.s treasury issuances but before the week is over i suspect there is not much on the horizon to really turn this around so i wouldn't be surprised if we end the week relatively close to this uh, support level um Ali, what do you mean by uh, our late in today's lecture? Um, so we also see it on uh, on uh, so it's 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 globally throughout the whole uh, spectrum, right? But um, to continue to talk about the yields, we also see it on, for instance, the German yields, who are uh, which are also coming off and which are equally have broken the uh, the sameish um, support line. And that explains what's happening in those differentials, and that is then going to uh, oh, all right, Ali, um, going to um, keep this this euro dollar and the cable, for instance. I'm looking here at the uh, at the sterling differentials. They are still not really moving higher. We do have a global dollar move, let's say this this morning uh, from, from the highs in, in the dollar this morning and the lows in the cable and the lows in the euro dollar. We do have a move because, as I already explained a few times, the dollar is the biggest market, okay? And and that's where the biggest money is is uh, is floating around. So we do have a bit of a push up in the euro dollar, push up in the cable as well. But um, those differentials, um, and I think I've got the euro here. Yeah, those differentials staying in those boxes 
are preventing from big breakouts on, on stuff like euro dollar and, and the cable, for instance, barring the occasional uh, move. But moving over to the currencies, one that has really woken up today specifically is um, we, we had already a move yesterday on, on the back of those uh, lower yields, but one that has really woken up today is the yen. Um, I would say welcome back, Mr. Yen, because it's been a really, really big move here and it's global. It's on all the yen pairs. It's not only dollar yen, but it's we can find it back on the euro yen, sterling yen, you name it. All those yen pairs are much lower. I think the market has finally woken up to what's happening, where the yields are coming down elsewhere, uh, elsewhere, everywhere. That is what I've already been mentioning quite a few times. The yen will be able or only be able, but will be able to strengthen when the rest of the world fall, falls apart around it, which we can safely say that for the time being, the rates pushing down everywhere. If you look at the UK, this is the UK actually coming into uh, support as well. Uh, Canadian yields are lower, Aussie yields are lower. Okay, so this is all positive for the yen and also um, what has been happening in the in the energy market. We have seen uh, oils coming down quite a quite a bit. Um, the recovering just uh, slightly, slightly uh, today, but um, really they've been uh, they've been uh, under uh, under quite a bit of pressure lately, and all of that is the combination why the yen is finally starting to to strengthen a bit. It could be, and again we leave, we will leave that in the middle until we know or we or we hear enough of it. It could be that um, the MOF having been quiet, very quiet, too quiet, as we were saying uh, uh, through the course of the week, that it's been a bit of a, a st there's been a bit of a stealth move there because it's it's global on the on, on the yen process. Um, but anyway, it has finally started to move. So now we have back down below this first line of support, the next one coming in around 148.80 and then 148.40. And as I was telling you already earlier this week, this is going to be an important zone here, that 148, 3080, um, the, uh, the top of the daily cloud is coming in around 148, um, 35, 37. And we are um, right now trading on the on the 55 DMA, okay? So this, this zone here is going to be very important to see where we close the week. <laughs> I am... Still running a piece of my uh, of my 150 and a half, uh, but which has been doing really very well. If it comes down here, I'm I'm for sure going uh, going to cover all uh, all of it, and then see where we go. Uh, the thing expires on Monday. Uh, I just hope for now a bit more volatility, and that will have been um, another pretty pretty decent trade. I must say, uh, I've been able to trade it around quite a bit. So that is already um, answering half of your question, Mike. Um, the dollar yen 149, uh, it could be, but again, uh, in, in me personally, I'm going to wait and see if we can get down here, if we can get down here, or if we start to get back above 149.90 figure. Um, of course, if, if the yields, if, if those yields are all holding, likely dollar yen will hold. But then you take a, a bet on, on the on the yields, right? I do think that when or if those the the, the US tens can go for a um test of this is 432-33 zone, we may be closer to uh to the to the top end of the of the cloud. And that is going to give you a pretty good level together with that the, the 140 um together with the 148 4080 that I showed before, um, which in my opinion is is a decent uh, is a decent enough uh, support zone uh, around here, okay? And then perhaps hide the stuff, hide your stop below 148, I would say. Um but for me personally, I'm not entering a, a long um, dollar yen right here and now. Um, now that can uh, that that being said, um, Ali, over to your um, question. Euro dollar, you are a bit long right now. If I saw that correctly, 
uh, around 53. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all right. Um, to me, we are, we are in a we are in a bit of a range, right? And I explained also why uh, because the European yields are coming down together with the uh, the uh, US yield. So we are in a bit of a range. Um, the underside of the range seems to be confirmed around here. This 25.30 again. We have seen that 30 starting to hold pretty well. Perhaps I should go on a smaller time frame just to show this thing a little bit bigger. So um, yeah, we have been uh, around here. Um, I don't know what he's doing here. Um, so this is your um, initial support around here. This is 20. Uh, it's actually, if we look closer at it, it's, it's rather around 20, this one, okay? Um, so this is your support area. Um, and uh, on on the top, I, I think we 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 have simply to watch what's going on around one hundred eight ninety figure. Okay, so this to me, <coughs> sorry, this to me, it where it's it, where we're at in the euro dollar, and with those yields, I'm 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 actually not taking any position in the euro dollar right now. Would wouldn't it be for a bit more than uh, than a couple of couple of hours and 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 trying to trade this this range. Um, and if you look at the cable, we are starting, starting. Okay, we, we could argue that we are building a flag here and that we're going higher. The same thing actually was said in the euro dollar as well, that we could be building flags to 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 move, to break out higher again. Could be if, if the US market is, is still um, a bit too long dollars. But on the other hand, we have to, um, we have to acknowledge that we are in, uh, in rather after an initial move, having done uh, ranges, okay, uh, in in those in those two uh, currencies, and look, we are capped uh, up there by the the hundred DMA, um, and as I said already before, there's a few interesting levels as well in the cable just above one twenty five towards the one twenty five and a half. I think this is an important zone. If ever we can go and retest that, it's going to be a very interesting watch on this cable. All right. Um, on the on the, the downside, we are we are turning around and, and seeming to cap somewhere around this this 200 DMA right now, which is also a bit of a, the, the, this prior high. Uh, I think the cloud is still hovering around here as well. This is uh, 124.33. So this is uh, <coughs> should be a level interesting enough to monitor for um, potentially around the close. Um, today, whether we are above or below this level. But again, um, I'm not a big fan of sterling right now, but we, we cannot uh, um, we cannot ignore what's happening on the, on the dollar side of things, okay? So if you are um, in sterling, perhaps euro sterling is one to watch. Um, as, as FT also mentioned in our chat room, 8740 is your uh, is your magnet level there. We are we are back on it, but we have seen this this uh, support um, this this wedge um, support hold um, also holding just uh, below 87 the figure. So if ever we get back down there, perhaps this is worth a try. But on the other side, we also have to respect what's happening above. So again, here I think. And then, if you look back at what uh, what I showed on the, on the differentials, sterling is always going smalls faster than the uh, than the euro in, uh, in in whatever happens, whether it's in gilts or or European yields as well, because um, because of the, the liquidity um, effect as well. But if you if you're in sterling, perhaps uh, have a look at that. But of course, this one too. And um, this was in a very interesting zone. It, it never reached there, actually, but I was watching some something around in, anywhere in the 189s, but it's been uh, rejected now. And uh, I do think this is a, a good enough rejection to, um, to start monitoring. So I'm just going to, not going to take the uh, September blip, but let's say the last move here and see where we could <clears throat> reasonably go back to. So the first level is around, I think, 183, 180, towards the 184 level. But um, if ever the yen continues to strengthen, which for the time being we cannot rule out, um, I do think that there is perhaps a decent possibility to go closer to 180 again, okay? Then in case the yen is continuing to weak, 
to weaken. I reckon for today it's got a good chance um, for the for the yen because of the moves. I I would say that, that the US is not going to completely reverse what's happening in uh, in in the bond market uh, today. So my just feeling is that the yen may still uh, uh, shine a bit here and. Um, Going on to the euro yen, you, you remember I was showing this really this this weekly thing around 164 and a half, and look where we went to to the test yesterday. Uh, we just stopped shy of it, all right. Um, 164 and a half is a a pretty decent level. And then if we look a, a, a little bit closer, we could still be forming a a a kind of a wedge or channel around here. Um, the bid. The support line is around 162, the figure where we are not too far uh, away from. And then um, if that would not be enough, then we have to start to look at what's uh, going on below. Um, I'm not calling a complete reversal of the yen here just as yet. This is what we saw over, over the week, the end of the week developing the yen, but I'm not going to call a complete reversal of the yen. I did say, though, that November last year was the start of a big revival of the yen, okay? And it happened after the, the US CPI. Today, this week, what happened? It, we also started to see the premises of uh, a return in the yen, not so much on the crosses, but we also started to see uh, a, a bit of more um, yen strength um, right after the, uh, the US CPI. And then with the confirmation of the rest of the uh, of of the data, and now also out of Euroland and out of uh, uh, the UK, for instance. So here is your your support. It's it's around 162, okay, in the euro yen. I'd watch that. If we start to go below, it's already been a, a pretty decent move. But I mean, if you compare it to the move that we had, it's still very small. So the yen, if we would see a reversal for for a prolonged period. The yen has massive room to 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 strengthen. For that, we are going to have um, those those yields continue to go to go down. Okay, today it may just be enough to to strengthen the yen more, but then we will have to see what happens next week on those on those yields. If they continue to weaken, then I think that the yen may be indeed in for a more prolonged period of uh, of recovery. Let's put it that way. And where this recovery can take us to, I think 158 is already going to be a, a big zone. And then here, this is going to be massive around 156 to 157 and just below 100 and, uh, 155. So these are going to be big levels to uh, to watch. Is it possible that we break today? Completely. I think so. Is it uh, is it possible that it is prolonged? I think we will need to have to wait for uh, for next week, okay? And it's about the same on all our yen pairs. If you look at Aussie yen, here we are, okay? Um, pretty much the same kind of picture there, uh, a little bit different, but the same kind of picture. 96.90, 96.80, we are trading 97.20, all right? Um, so this is your, your support. And... It, can it go further again? Yes. Can it go much deeper? I'd say watch what's happening in, in at ninety five if we get there. All right. So these these are the levels to watch. If uh, um, yeah, Kiwi yen, Kiwi yen is actually a, a pretty strange one because if you look at this, um, it 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 never really confirmed. The, oh, this is the weekly. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm on I'm on the wrong view here. Okay, we, we are, um, no, we are uh, roughly the same. But if you look at um, Kiwi Yen has been much less uh, uh, sexy and I'm, I haven't traded it because um, I'm, I've got this little bit of a, I'm, I'm long as a Kiwi, by the way. So I'm not really impressed by what's happening in Kiwi Land. So I, I haven't been, really been monitoring. Uh, I know it's an interesting pair, <laughs> Giuseppe, but, you know, you can only watch um, as much, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's only as much that goes into uh, one brain. And uh, if it's like mine, it's not a big one, so I cannot store too much in there. Um, 
look on the dollar Canada because oil was on the move and the Canadian dollar has been uh, has been underperforming. This is uh, where we went up again yesterday. This is um, the dollar move that we are seeing this morning. It's uh, it's going to happen around the figure, but then um, this one and we do have uh, industrial price index and, and retail price index. Um, uh, raw material price index coming in this afternoon as well. Um, if ever this dollar cat comes back to 136, 40, 60, that's a zone that I'm going to really keep a close eye on. All right, so that's for this afternoon. Um, if we get a little more weakness on those uh, on those yields, perhaps, um, and and if the, the the dollar market sells off a little bit more, um, this this could perhaps come back around here and then. We will have a. Uh, I will have a close look at it. Um, Eurocad. I know people have uh, have been uh, watching this as well. Seems that we are um, starting to have trouble every time we move above one hundred and sixty-eight. Okay, uh, one sixty-eight. Sorry, every time we are above one sixty-eight, we're starting to uh, to reverse. And same could be said on other euro crosses, right? Look at the euro Aussie. Uh, unfortunately, I, I'm not in, in the position right now. I didn't re-enter um, on this on this move up, but um, and, and we are again around this uh, this pretty interesting level. Um, but again, it's it's another one where if you look at uh, the, the the tops cannot be reached prior tops. Okay, we had a quick look at it on Tuesday, but it's 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 starting to be difficult to uh, to keep those bids. I think there may be. If I see a big higher, I'm, I'm probably going to try again because it, it does look to me that at some stage we are going to revisit uh, those those lower levels, perhaps. Okay. Um, what also is is very interesting to note, and DK in our room has has been saying that is when the dollar weakens, euros it tends to come off as well. If the dollar strengthens, euros it tends to go higher, and that has everything to do with the liquidity in 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 both pairs. But it's a an interesting, just an interesting fact. Um, when when the dollar strengthened, this this pair has the the habit of of going a, a little bit higher together with uh, other euro pairs. Okay, uh, now we have to look at the metals because we are back. We are nearly back. Um, you know, I was talking about this uh, this zone here. Finally, with the with a weaker dollar, with the yields coming off, gold has started to move higher again. So now we are going to have to monitor that range again, 2005, 2012. Okay, this is your uh, this is your top end of the of the range to uh, to watch. Underside with the yields where they are, I would suspect that this is now going to hold somewhere around 1970 in in, uh, in the 1960s for as long as the uh, as the yields do not start to go higher again. Silver is a very interesting one. Uh, yesterday I took some, some parcels off uh, again because I wasn't sure. Yesterday those yields were seemingly holding uh, uh, much better. Um, we are in the resistance zone again, 2405 up to 24 and a quarter. If we start to break 24 and a quarter, I think there, there may be a bit more um, in, uh, in silver to go higher, perhaps back to those prior uh, tops and bottoms around 2465 but I, I would really assume that if we break higher here we are going to at least have a look at what's going on in the, in the 25 bucks uh, zone that for the metals and uh, last but not least I could look at many many things today but last but not least we are still working on the on this zone here in the uh, in the S&P I think keep an eye on what's happening today, 45, 35, 45, 40. That is um, where the thing is going to have to stop or fly through. Uh, again, as I've been saying, some, some people may be tempted to already start to, to do a bit of, a, of their end of year uh, rebel. So it could be that this is just a bit of a flag and that we are continuing uh, higher here. I'm not going to, to, to really... Um, Take a big punt on this one right now. Also, we have OPEX today. I nearly forgot to mention that we have OPEX today. Okay, so this could get a little bit volatile in the in the equity markets. 
<laughs> I'm going to leave it here, guys, for the day. Um, just one thing to note, late tonight, we will have Moody's uh, evaluation of how the Italian situation is going on. I would suspect they will leave it uh, uh, the same, but there are some voices out there that they may be tempted to slap a few fingers. So watch out for, for the Euro uh, and near or after the close um, for for potential a little bit of a gap open on Monday. I don't know, but if if uh, Moody's would uh, find it uh, funny to uh, to downgrade some of Italy's um, um, rating or outlook, um, it, it may have uh, that small impact on uh, on the uh, here on those uh, differentials, the Italian and, and German differentials, which are very relaxed right now. And this is relatively positive for Euro and, uh, and, and risk as well. And that's it for from me, guys. Thank you very, very much for being with us this week. Let's all hope that Ryan is over his COVID by Monday or at least feeling a lot uh, fresher. We shall talk uh, to each other again on uh, on Monday. Have a relaxing weekend. Bye-bye. Hey, traders. This is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.